Hi there, my name is Scott Phillips. I'm the president and founder of Starfish Medical. We've been designing medical equipment for 18 years for companies all over North America. And in the last few years, we've really seen an upsurge in interest in, in our services and connecting those devices to the outside world, using that critical data in ways that can be plugged directly into hospital information systems, where we can have portals for physicians, for patients themselves, for caregivers, for the companies to see the maintenance and, and any usability time issues. There's so many ways that you can use that information. And the applications range from large capital equipment to point of care devices, and sometimes to wearable mobile devices. And there's a lot of things that we've learned along the way. So to, in today's video, we'd like to share with you some of the team members that are expert in human factors, in industrial design and usability, in electronics design, in software, in regulatory affairs for these types of connected devices. I hope you find it really interesting. Thank you. Medical devices used by patients are becoming more consumer-like. There's a trend with providers and payees to put the onus on the patient for their own health care and being responsible for their health care due to cost and due to compliance issues because of the post-op uh, complications that happen when patients are not compliant. And, and having the patient take responsibility for their recovery, it's important to understand behavior because we want them to be compliant with the recovery and the post-op uh, complications that they may have. And so in order to do that, we need to really dive down and to figure out what is, what is actually compliant, what will help with compliance, what will help with patient compliance, what can we design, what problems can we solve to make their lives easier during the recovery period. When designing a medical device, it's important to look at the data you're pulling off. The starting point, of course, is the medical data, but additional data, device information, timing information of treatments and so on, all provide a great deal of additional value. So a recommendation I have when you're working on a software project when it comes to verification and validation is to plan for and start executing the tests early in the project. One kind of point I do like is uh, the idea that you know you shouldn't think of testing as just something you need to do at the end of a project. It's something you should be planning for early and doing often. You know, testing shouldn't be a road bump and you know, testers aren't the bad guys. You can come at it from an iterative approach, allowing for quick turns between your testing team and your development team, uh, allowing for quick resolution of uh, issues that do come up. So using this approach, in addition to helping deliver quality product, allows you to avoid problems like finding issues with the product too late in the project, uh, which can affect your schedule. Wireless technology is going to be expected in medical devices and the costs are plummeting. Expect that you will have to include this technology in your devices. In tens of thousands, you're going to probably get wireless capability into your device for a couple of bucks, three, four bucks. Generally, we'll pay more than that for good cabling. Now, the wireless capability of three or four bucks is the enabler that allows you to do a whole bunch of other things. It's not an end of itself, but the expectation is that you will use this end to collect data. You can monitor in ways that you couldn't monitor before. That's where I think the tip and the value proposition is. My tip for a project managers planning out their medical device is to make sure that the core technology is functioning and performing as expected before adding wireless, uh, Bluetooth, or cellular connectivity to your digital health device. In the example of a body-mounted diagnostic device that we have worked on here, um, we were having issues with the noise in the system uh, during the development and we were trying to figure out exactly where it's coming from, why it's happening, what we can do to fix it, and it's harder when you have uh, the sensor itself, uh, the wireless transmitter, and the receiver all um, kind of under development. And so by 
removing some of that functionality and bringing a simple wire in during development using just a regular um, or more simple um, computer-based operating system. Uh, we were able to isolate the, the actual core technology itself uh, from the rest of the system and therefore it was easier to fix problems on the fly, cheaper, faster, uh, and we, we were able to get that device working quite well and then we went back later and re-added uh, that, that Bluetooth functionality. Get a simple data API into your system early. In my role with new clients, I often get the opportunity to help shape and visualize how the medical device can be adopted into the clinical setting and how we want to start technically solving that problem. Part of that problem is working with the clinical informatics systems, the business systems, the financial systems, and how those integrations are going to work. Clearly, those integrations will take time and will be unique as the product matures and moves into other markets. But we can start very, very early with basic data accessibility from the device, even in the pre-prototypes and alpha versions. And the key to that is APIs. So when ensuring the integrity of the pathway, it's important not just to involve the designers of the device and the protocols there, but also any third parties involved in the remainder of the pathway. Really, my view on this is that this is the very beginnings of things, and as this information starts aggregating and becomes available, it's just going to enable so many different things that we haven't even begun to think of yet. Uh, the kinds of things where cross correlations become available, and as importantly, those kinds of things are going to enable things like population studies that were never possible before. So to think that we're going to build medical devices that don't participate in that is, to me, almost meaningless. It's not an excursion out of the work. So the tip is the data is at people's fingertips and that's, that's not going to go away.